Hey, what's up you guys? Welcome back to Team APS. In today's video, I wanted to talk about five things that I feel a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh players forget to do. And it's stuff that I see at local, stuff that I see at tournaments, and I wanted to bring attention to it in a video like this because these are things that can really cause you to lose matches or lose money or lose your cards entirely. So, these are the five things. Let's hop in. Problem number one, a lot of people don't keep track of life points. This has always been crazy to me because you know, the type of person that I am, I like for everything to be like structured and stuff. So I always have to keep track of things. So when I started playing Yu-Gi-Oh, keeping track of life points was like just the second nature. Like I was like, okay, I have to have pen and paper. I have to have a calculator or something. And those are all ways you can keep track of life points. But the worst thing and the thing I see happen so often is people sometimes like in their local tournaments and stuff, just keeping track of life points in their head. Like, you know, oh, uh, yeah, I think I'm at 5,700. And it's just like, no, that's horrible. I mean, I get it when you are just like at a friend's house and you're just kind of screwing around. Yeah, maybe not. But literally any other setting, I mean, any local tournament, of course, any regional tournament, any YCS tournament, you want to make sure that like you know exactly what your life points are. You need to know exactly what your opponent's life points are. And you also need to like verify with your opponent all the time that like you guys both know what the life points are because nothing's worse than ending up in those situations where you know like someone thinks they won but then the other person's like oh well no like i didn't lose yet i didn't actually lose those life points there or like when did i you know i didn't take that damage and it's just kind of like well like who's right who's wrong who's been keeping track um and it gets especially bad when you know you have to like call judges over or try to like retrace steps and a good word of caution is that when judges do get involved, typically they're going to side with the person who kept track of life points, especially if it's through pen and paper. So you want to make sure that you do that so that you have an actually reliable backlog and you don't get into those situations because they're not really fun for anyone. Number two, reading your cards. I think that from all the time I've played Yu-Gi-Oh, this might actually be the worst one, or at least the most common one. Um, it's people who just don't read their cards. And when I say their cards, I mean literally like yours and your opponents. It's so important to when you're deciding what deck you wanna build, when you're putting the deck together, when you're playtesting with your friends, and of course when you're playing at tournaments, always read the cards, read what your cards do. So many cards in this game have little small like extra effects, little small stipulations, little things where it's like, you know, this bounces an attack position monster, not just any monster. Or, you know, this can only work on a monster that's like in defense position. Or, you know, just like you can only activate this if you have this many cards in your hand. So many little things come up. And then what can end up happening is you either activate one of your own cards, you weren't actually able to, your opponent catches you on it, and then you get like either a warning or like, even if they let you take it back, I mean, they now know like what's in your hand or whatever. And then the second thing is you can literally get cheated by the same, like, by the same thing because your opponent's just activating these cards and you just kind of like take for granted that they're telling the truth, which is a bad thing to do, by the way. Uh, always, you know, if your opponent's activating, a, going through some crazy combo and they're playing some deck you've never heard of, read those cards, like, you know, ask them to like slow down and let you just pick it up and read it really quickly at least. But, you know, just so you know what's going on, whether they're breaking rules, whether you're breaking rules, if you can respond to certain things, just how stuff works. Because if you don't read your cards, uh, you know, and your opponent's not reading anything, sometimes the entire game can just like completely derail. So definitely do that. Number three, checking card prices. So, um, yeah, Yu-Gi-Oh cards have a price tag. You might have noticed. Uh, some cards are, you know, upwards of $50 or even $100. And so what ends up happening at card shops especially is people are trading and they look to scam people, basically. Um, you might pull like some $60 card and then someone walks up to you and they're like, oh, yeah, I want to trade you for that. They'll offer you $10 or like $10 worth of cards. And if you don't know that impermanence is like 60 or 80 bucks, however much it is, then, you know, you get scammed, you lose the card. And, you know, as much as we want to say, well, people shouldn't do this, this is like a horrible thing to do, you're a scumbag if you do it, people will still do it. So it's your responsibility at least to know the values of your own cards. You can use all sorts of sites to do it. 
I think a great one to use is TCG Player. No particular reason why I'm saying that or anything, but uh, yeah, keep track of you know your card prices and card prices fluctuate. So you don't just want to like look it up once, like kind of keep track of your most valuable cards like every week. Cause if you watch like these market watch videos like everybody does, then you'll know that sometimes a card can spike in price. So a card that you had that was you thought was worth like nothing might actually be worth five or 10 bucks all of a sudden, or maybe it's worth like 30 and you don't want to get scammed. And of course, like, you know, it also just helps with trading in general. You can get a better idea of what other people's cards are worth and how to like make trades just work out for in, your, in your favor and stuff and be even. So yeah, it's a good habit and I don't think I see enough people doing it. Number four, checking your opponent. So something that I see in a lot of tournaments is people who just kind of let their opponent get away with like anything. And this sort of falls in line with like reading cards and keeping track of life points. But you know, every time your opponent like shuffles their deck and stuff, cut the deck. Do not like say like, oh, it's okay, it's no big deal. Like you want to cut decks. Now, I mean, if they, you know they're about to like go back in, like do like two or three different search effects in a row, that's one thing, but you know, definitely do cut their deck at the end. And also keep track of your opponent's hand size. Do they have three cards in hand? How did they suddenly get that fourth card in their hand? Like, are they cheating you? Are they drawing extra cards? Or did you just maybe miss something that was totally legal, but you just don't know why they suddenly have three or four cards in hand or whatever, and then they had like two or three. And also check their graveyard, you know, check the order of the cards in their grave. It's very important. Um, you know, that they're not supposed to be tampering with that type of stuff. Make sure you keep track of their life points. Make sure you do read their cards. Those are like the earlier tips. Basically just keep watch of your opponent, you know, make sure that you know when they're going from phase to phase. In a lot of tournaments, people will say things like, you know, announce your phases, please, just so I can know when you're going into the main phase, or when you're ending the main phase and going into the battle phase, because there are so many cards that have activation timings and, you know, just things that like can't act be activated in the battle phase, but can be activated in the main phase. And you want to know when that stuff is available to you or when it's available to your opponent. So you need to kind of keep an open channel of communication. Too often instead, I'll see players, and this is kind of more at the lower kind of local level, where like when they end their turn, they'll just like set their hand down and just kind of like let their opponent do whatever. And they'll start trading or something or like, you know, checking their phone or whatever. And it's like, if it's like a casual enough setting, sure, maybe you're like playing with your friends, but like if it's a tournament, you want to keep a watch on your opponent. Not even because I'm saying like everybody's untrustworthy and they're trying to cheat you, but because A, it's respectful and B, I mean, you don't want to miss things. And it's a better learning opportunity if you kind of pay attention and it helps you understand why you lost or why things went the way that they did. So definitely don't just, you know, give your opponent the benefit of the doubt on everything and just ignore it all. Make sure that you are keeping a watch on them all the time. And number five, watching your cards. So, uh, just, or your stuff really, not even just your cards. So when you go to locals, when you go to regionals, when you go to ICS events, especially, keep a track on your stuff. You want to not, you know, obviously you want to have like a backpack or something. Make sure that it's always like zipped up. Make sure that it's always like on your person. Um, some people wear their backpacks in the front even, like just so that people can't like sneak up behind you and take things. Like people swipe cards. It is not a good practice. I always hope people won't do it, but I mean, it's Yu-Gi-Oh, you've got people like that, they steal things, watch your cards. Uh, a big mistake in particular related to this is people who are like trading will like just trade with like two or three people at one time, which I think is a really bad practice. So they'll have like two or three trade binders all out on the table and three different people are looking at them. That's like a prime opportunity for people to swipe your cards and they will. They might even take the whole binder or they might take your backpack or whatever. And like, you can only really do one trade at a time. So three people shouldn't all be like picking through your cards and stuff. That's a big no, no. And then also, you know, you don't want to have too much stuff. I always tell people if you're going to like, you know, like regional or YCS, it's sometimes better to just leave a lot of your trades at home. Maybe bring a small trade binder and that's it. Or maybe just bring money if they're going to a place that allows people to buy cards or you want to buy stuff from vendors. But don't, you know, bring the entire, like, you know, everything with a kitchen sink. I've seen people with like big duffel bags and like airport luggage and just like all this stuff full of cards. And when you have to set like three or four different bags down beside you everywhere you go, it just makes you a really easy target to people who are thieves and want to take your cards. So make sure that you don't do that. It is, it's problematic uh, for so many, because then like someone's cards are stolen, they're having to ask around, have you seen my stuff and you can't trust anyone. 
and your friends don't care about your cards nearly as much as you care about your cards. So, I mean, even be careful when you're just asking people like, hey, will you wash my stuff? Like, get, you know, go wherever you're going and get back quickly. Like, keep your stuff on your person all the time. All right, so those are five things that I feel a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh players just sort of forget to do. And everyone makes these mistakes. I'm not saying I'm perfect. I mean, I've learned my lessons the hard way with some of this stuff. I've lost games or had cards stolen. Like, I've been through this. I know how it is. That's why I want to help you guys. So hopefully this video was informative and helpful and just a good reminder to, you know, check those prices, read those cards, watch your stuff because Yu-Gi-Oh has bad people and you just always want to be on the up and up. All right, I've gone on long enough. It's going to be it. If this video was helpful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe for more Yu-Gi-Oh, and I will see you guys in the next one. Pass turn.